Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to the first video in quite some time where we're going to look at a monetary policy update in August of 2022. Hopefully in your school you're getting towards a Unit 4 Area Study 1 SAC and it's good to have all the most up-to-date information possible so you can do as well as possible. So we're going to look at the current increase in the cash rate and what that means for various parts of the curriculum in this Area Study about aggregate demand side policies. So strap yourselves in, we're going to look at the good stuff. So the cash rate, as you can see here in the graph, it has increased to 1.85% in August of 2022. As you can see, before then, we were down here at 0.1%, which was the lowest in recorded history. Since then, we have gone with a less expansionary approach all the way up to 1.85 as we try and tackle what we're going to be talking about as we go through. This obviously then also filters on to higher interest rates also which is going to greatly impact anyone with any kind of debt. Obviously, higher cash rate and high interest rates are slightly different as banks are the ones who set interest rates and they're always going to be slightly higher as banks are interested in making a profit. So, how this then impacts the RBA stance and focus. When we're talking about this, I've done a lot of research over the last few weeks, a lot of discussion with a lot of great professionals of other teachers. We're looking at this as being less expansionary monetary policy. The RBA, when talking about why they increased the cash rate, they're targeting the goal of low inflation. So inflation at the moment is at 6.1% and is expected to increase upwards of 7.75% by the end of the year. They're trying to increase the cash rate to slow that inflation rate down back towards the target range of that 2-3% to on average over time. That's what we want to get to. And the RBA sees that as a precondition to achieving all of their other goals. So it's really important to get back towards that if we then want to keep being able to um, achieve the goal of full employment and the strong sustainable economic growth. We see this as less expansionary because we're still expecting to see growth. It's still interest rates at a point where it's not going to slow growth down too much. If we start getting above 2% later in the year, it might get to a point where we start talking about it as being contractionary. But in the current time, less expansionary is the most correct way to talk about the stance. So how this impacts on the transmission mechanisms. So for this, well, before we even talk about that, if you want to talk about with open market operations, when they increase the cash rate to that point, when they want to increase the cash rate, they would have sold government securities. Uh, and this would have lowered the amount of cash available in the overnight money market and therefore would have put upward pressure on the cash rate. So important point to have on there is you often get asked about tractionary or less expansionary monetary policy or tightening of monetary policy and if they buy or sell government securities. If then get to transmission mechanisms, how does it impact each of them? Usually when you get transmission mechanism questions, you get the option to talk about two of your choice. I always recommend students to talk about the cash flow channel and the exchange rate channel because they are the ones that are the most different and therefore give you the most well-reasoned and impressive sounding answer overall. If the cash rate increased and that led to an increase in interest rates, for the cash flow channel, this means that households with variable rate home loans, as well as businesses with existing debt, face reduced cash flow as households have less discretionary income, which is gonna reduce their consumption spending and therefore reduce aggregate demand. And for businesses, it's going to decrease their willingness to invest as they've got lower cash flow overall and therefore also decrease aggregate demand. With savings and investment, it's going to increase households' willingness to save and therefore that's going to reduce aggregate demand as there's more leakages to aggregate demand. With asset values, with higher interest rates, house prices have begun to fall as there's less demand for wealth or assets. With the exchange rate channel, it's going to mean that if our interest rates are increasing higher relative to other countries, it's going to create more, uh, it's going to become more enticing for foreign investors to invest in Australian financial institutions as there's a greater return on that investment. So that can lead to an exchange rate appreciation, potentially. And then with the availability of credit channel, these increased interest rates have led banks or financial institutions to have stricter lending criteria as it's more of a risk to loan uh, money out to people if there is less money available. It's also meant that banks have started looking to provide discounts for people who are safe investments. So there was stuff in the news last week about banks looking towards um, giving discounts to people who don't have much existing debt. 
because they're a safer investment for banks to loan out money to, knowing they'll definitely be able to get it back, even if interest rates continue to rise. How this then ties in with strengths and weaknesses of monetary policy, just in case you get an evaluate or a discuss type question. The best ones to use are still that monetary policy has a short implementation lag. So because interest rates increase within 24 hours of the cash rate increasing, it means it can directly have an impact on discretionary income and therefore impact consumption and investment spending very, very quickly and therefore impact aggregate demand. The downside of that being there's a long impact lag. So although it does have some impact straight away through that quick implementation, much investment spending needs planning because you're not gonna go and buy a house the day after interest rates change. Um, you've gotta actually have steps in place to plan that out. So it means the full effect is felt for up to two years. So there may be some limited impact or it may take up to two years for it to have the desired impact on um, the goal of low inflation. So full impact takes up to two years. And so there, this is just six minutes quickly going over some of the most important parts of how the cash rate has risen and why that is important right now and how it relates to the key knowledge right now. One other thing I'd like to spruik is that if you're interested or anything that I've done has helped you, I'm running a revision lecture in the second week of the holidays on Thursday, the 29th of October. There's going to be two parts to it. There's a unit three lecture and a unit four lecture. You can either come to both or one up to you where we'll go through all of the content in detail. And as we get to relevant parts of the content, we will slice in past exam questions relevant to that and talk about how you'd go about answering that to get a really high mark answer. They're $30 each, they go for two and a half hours each, or if you wanna to go to both, it's $45. The link for that will be in the description below if you want to sign up to that or have a look at it. Um, other than that, if you have any questions at all, feel free to comment below, let me know, send me an email, however you want to do that. And other than that, good luck for any upcoming sacks, and I hope you have a wonderful night. I'll see you next time. Bye.